everyone so in part one i created the basic framework so it's just the walls and the floor um, for the derelict room so this is part two and in this part i'm going to show you what things i decided to add and what extra th pieces i added for detail so first of all i just took some very very thin balsa wood as you can see it's so thin you can cut it with scissors and made a broken chair so to do this all you do is you cut out a square of um, very thin balsa wood round off the two front corners and then take a couple of matchsticks to make the back rest and back legs and then just snap some um, matchsticks to make the two front legs obviously it doesn't have to be perfect doesn't have to stand up or anything because it is a broken chair and all that is just glued into place with hot glue, as you can see. So all I'm doing is breaking off a bit of matchstick and sticking it in place for what I want. And then once you've done the legs, you just need two more little matchsticks to stick in the middle at the back. I'm just breaking the top there to make it look a bit more broken. And then... I just took two more little bits of matchstick and stuck them in the centre space for the backrest. So it looks like one of those chairs where it has like four poles going up the back and then the um, sort of rounded frame around it to make the back of the chair. But obviously this one's a broken one. And once it's like all the bits are attached and the glue's dried it looks like this and then all you do is you take a wash of um i believe this was a bit of burnt sienna burnt burnt umber and a little dot of black and mix it very thinly with plenty of water it's basically um one part paint to one and a half parts water basically and all you do is use a nice big um brush and just use this just dab it it doesn't have to be like a perfect um even coat of color if it's blotchy and patchy it's it works out better and then once the chair was completed and touched up all the areas make sure you've covered all the area in the stain then i stuck it into the uh, center of the piece then I decided to make a friend um, for the chair. This one's a very broken one. It's just the base and a couple of legs left. Um, this one's further along in the decay process than the other chair. I wanted this to be, um, I imagine this used to be like a dining room or something. So these are two broken dining room type chairs. I did contemplate doing like an armchair and having it as a living room. But that involved trying to source some springs and things so I could make little exposed springs on the armchair. So I'll do that in another project. Um, I'm just using what I've got around the house for now. And then once I was happy with that, I obviously stained the wood. And then it's time. it was time to add some more decorations. So I got some broken bits of wood. Literally, they're just lollipop sticks and little bits of balsa wood that I've I've actually just snapped in half and used those as um, broken rafters that have fell from the roof and fell on the floor. Um, I did some more of those in the corner, which you'll see later on as well. Um, I switched my um, camera angle, so hopefully you get a better view and this gives you a bit more of a realistic colour. And... What I'm doing here is I'm using some um, filler and I'm applying it in little patches. I applied it in the corner where the ceiling's collapsed and also here in the carpet. This is great for adding texture um, and it adds like a sort of texture as if there's like a layer of sort of mud and grit on the floor. I, th I felt that the, the um, carpet needed a bit more texture, I needed it to be a bit more worn. So I applied that and then the next job was just to dry it off with a heat gun a bit. Now this stuff, it's not going to dry perfectly, um, but using the heat gun just helps me to dry it off a little bit just so I can still work with it. 
Then I took um, some very watered down brown and mixed that um, applied that over the top of the filler and it just gives that lovely sort of dirt mud grit type texture and then the next thing I just oh that's my uh, tripod collapsing excuse me um, it's not the best setup but <laughs> Um, so yeah, as you can see, I've started to add um, little more, some more bits of wood. These are to represent the broken roof rafters, that because this corner is where the roofs collapsed and caved in. So I wanted a little pile of wood, and next to the wood on the floor, that's where I've painted that hole and created the hole in the carpet. So the idea is that the roofs collapsed at the top above this area and it's caused a hole in the floor and the floor is about to collapse as well and I found it easier in the end just to say fiddling about with tweezers too much to glue everything in place first and then put a washer colour over the top I just found this easier and then I've got some grit which is um, actually for use in aquariums as an alternate alternative to sand and gravel it's like a very fine gravel it's it is more like grit basically but i use it for um potting plants and also use it for model making so i just bought a bag of it and i used some of it in here because i wanted that to be like rubble from the ceiling maybe it's like chunks of plaster um chunks of brick um different things like that that's what i've got these um little grit pieces to represent so I just stuck those around and added bits of wood here and there I decided to add a broken chair leg or two um, to represent the bits that have broken off the two chairs that have left have been left behind so I glued those in place and then took my very watered down paint and painted those um, little chair legs I'd added and also the um, bits of wood that I added in the corner. I also use this to, to wash over the um, grit as well to make it look darker as if it's a bit more aged, a bit older. And then I've ran some more of the darker colour down the corner of the room I wanted the corner of the room to look really dark and dingy and like that's the source of where like all the damp and all the ickiness and the mold is coming from and here I'm just adding a bit of grit that's on the chair I imagine that what's happened is as the roofs collapse bits of grit and debris have fallen on the uh, what's left of the chair and then I stuck some of the grit down in little piles around the room again to represent like um, lumps of gravel and um, rubble sorry lumps, lumps of rubble, rubble around the room I decided for this room to not add too much furniture wise I decided what I wanted to do in the end was Add the wood for the collapsed ceiling, add some bits of grit for rubble. Um, then I added the two broken dining room chairs and that's the like, the big ob objects I added. And other than that, it was just like a few little tiny details at the end. And I found these leaves. Um, these are actually like real ones that have been dried from like a little weed that I found in one of my plant pots. Um, glued that in place as well. I found that quite useful because um, I didn't have to make it. It was something I could just find and use. And I added a piece of it there to make it look like there's a plant growing out the, black, the um, back wall. Because you find that on a lot of old buildings, you'll have like a gap in the wall and you'll see like a weed growing out of it. And obviously I added some of my moss here and there and other little bits and bobs. Here I'm just adding some moss to the chair because the chair would be 
growing a decent layer of moss and mould at this level of decay so I added a bit more to make it look like it had been there longer. Here I'm just touching up with the the colour wash. It's like a dark brown colour wash that I've got. I'm using that to darken down some of the moss, to darken down the little pebbles and rocks that I've added and blend everything in a bit more. And anywhere where I felt it, I added the rocks. Um, every, anywhere where I felt needed it, I added a few of the little rocks. What you have to be careful though of is not putting them in a row or anything. You have to make sure you put them so it looks random. I also stuck a piece of wood hanging down from the ceiling. Again to represent that broken down and collapsed in rooftop. Can't see it in shot unfortunately which is a shame. And I added another piece down the bottom too. Then I made this little broken frame and stuck it in place. It's just a matchstick that I've bent in three places. That's how, that's how I made it. Because obviously it doesn't have to be perfect because it is a broken one. And I just stuck that down in place and then um, used my colour wash to stain the wood. I wanted it to look like it was originally like a, a black frame. Um, and... Obviously over time it's gone a bit manky looking. So it's just a case of touching up all the bits where needed. I wanted it to look really gungy and, and horrible. And then I used some of my really watered down mixture to go around the frame a little bit. I do touch it up with a little bit of dry brushing later on to make it stand out a bit more because at the minute it blends in a bit too much but you'll see me do that later. And then the next thing I did was I took a small frame and found a picture it's just a random one left over from another miniature um, project and I attached the frame unfortunately you can't see in shot what I'm doing but you'll see it in a minute so I attached the picture in frame I went for a picture that kind of looked old-fashioned that was kind of what I was going for um, and stuck it in place and then it was just a case of attaching it to the wall and to do that I just used my hot glue again and then it was just a case of staining it so it looked old um, and I used some of the um, watered down paint that I'm using as well over the picture to make the picture look really faded and worn as well because obviously I don't want it to look like a brand new picture or anything. So here you can see I'm just staining the frame and I'm also I've also gone over the picture as well to make the picture look really faded. So it looks like it was once probably a nice picture, but now it's faded that much. You can't hardly see what it is. And then I decided to create two areas on the wall to look like there used to be two more pictures up. And to do that, you take a small rectangle of card or paper. In this case, I'm using some card. And I've just got a bit of hot glue and a matchstick to hold it in position for me. And all you do is you just dry brush your dark colour all the way around it, like so. And it leaves a space so it looks like there used to be a picture there on the wall. Because if you've ever had a picture on, the, on your wall in your house and then it's been there for like a year and then you take it down, you always have a light patch where the sun hasn't affected um, the... Um, colour underneath of the wall because obviously it's been protected from the sunlight so it'll look like a bit a bit lighter and a bit more well it just looks like that basically I can't think how to describe it then I took a random piece of paper just some brown paper and um, covered it in the um, 
brown watery wash and then twisted it and mushed it and stuck it into place. And I also decided to make the broken frame that fell off the wall for one of the other pictures. So I just got a matchstick and bent it in three places and roughly painted it and glued it into position. And then just used my brush just to push it down into the position I wanted it to be in and touched up the um, paint on it. I painted it so it was the same colour as the frame that's on the wall. Um, but obviously it's just broken to represent the broken frame that's fell off years ago. And then after doing that, I think the next thing I did was make a small book. And all you do is you cut a strip of paper and preferably with some sort of print on it. And you fold it kind of like a fan where you fold it one way then the other. And then stick it together and it creates a little book. I'll, I'll have to show you how to do it for ones with um, pages in. But basically it's just some a sheet of little sheet of paper about a centimetre wide and it's about eight centimetres long and it's just folded up in a sort of zigzag pattern and glued together to make a book. Um but then I glued made sure I glued all the pages together. I just wanted like the thickness so it looked like a very thin book. Unfortunately, I was out of shot when I when I did it. There you go. So you can see it's sort of folded up. Kind of yeah, it's just folded up round and round, really, isn't it? I thought I'd sort of done it like a fan. Never mind. Um. So yeah. So I glued the the book together, glued all the pages down, and then used my um watered down brown paint to discolor it, and stain it, and make it look all grungy and grotty. Gunji and Grotti, I should say. And then I use my heat gun just to dry off the paint um, because obviously if I want to use the hot glue to stick it down, I need it to be dry. Otherwise, hot glue won't stick to it. And I crinkled it up and bent the book a little bit and then glued it into position. And then... Just touched up where the stains were from where the old frames were going to be. I just darkened them up a little bit just to make them stand out a little bit more. And I just added some more drips to the one wall because I felt it just needed a little bit more to just finish, finish it off. To finish it off, I painted the board all the way around uh, black. Because if you remember when I first constructed it, there's like a board at the bottom and then the bit where it's the actual floor in the room. So there's this space all the way around the um, room. So I decided to paint it black just to finish it off. So it kind of looks like I've made the room and then stuck it onto a display board. I might at some point make like an acrylic um, cover for it, like dust cover for it. But at the moment, I'm going to leave it as it is. So this just took a couple of layers of black acrylic paint and a little tip here when you're painting this, if you find you're having trouble painting it because obviously it's not primed the wood, just coat the wood in a layer of very thin down watery paint first and then go over it with the acrylic paint and it will smooth down and it will spread a lot easier than it does on the bare wood. And then just two layers is all it took. So as you can see, it's kind of hard to like brush it in place when the wood's dry. But you'll see as time goes on, what I start doing is wetting the wood first and then painting the black over the top. And I just did this all the way around just to finish off the um, outside. I don't tend to worry about doing anything on the outside of the models because for me, that's just the that's like the back of it. The bit that's the pot, the focus and the interest is inside the room. So I don't worry too much about outside the room. I may at some point for one of them do an outside, but for now I've just painted it black and left it at that. It just finishes it off nicely, I think, and just makes it look like it's finished if it's painted black on the outside. 
as opposed to being left as the bare wood. And as you can see, going over it once or twice, you can get a decent um, matte black finish to it. And I also did the black around the very edges of the boards where I hadn't put any of the paint effects because it was just the bare wood showing and I decided it would look better with that covered up. So as you can see here, I'm taking the very watered down paint first of all and just roughly going over the board. This just helps it not suck the paint in so much and it just helps it flow a bit easier when I'm painting the actual colour layer. I just find it makes it spread a lot easier. And just keep adding plenty of water. I could have primed this really, but I haven't got any primer, so. And if you're wondering about the white sort of smudgy effect here, what it is is my paintbrush has accidentally touched the white. So I decided to just blend it all in and then go over it again with a second layer of black afterwards. It's because my paint palette's very small and I've got some white paint on it, which I thought had dried, but obviously hadn't. Never mind. So this was just to, um, like I said, finish off the outside and just make it look like I've finished it. And you'll see in a bit, um, see I'm going over it in black now, you'll see in a bit that I turn it around and I just add the last couple of finishing touches. And just make sure as well you go like the top edge of the um, boards that form the wall as well make sure you go over the top edge of those as well so as you can see that expose when my arms out the way you see the side of the woods exposed so all I'm doing here is just touching it up with the black paint and just makes it look a bit more finished off and then you'll see in a bit the last thing I do is I actually take um, a real leaf, a real dried leaf, um, and crumble it up and sprinkle it around the room to look like leaves have fallen through the um, broken roof. Um, and that's pretty much it. I think I don't think I added anything else apart from the crunched up leaf, which you'll see me do in a second. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's my derelict room. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.